<coughs> Hello friends, today we are going to learn ABG analysis and acid base disorders just in 5 minutes. So I'll take you quickly through the chapters which you are going to learn today. So we are going to learn ABG analysis in the following steps. First of all, we'll see what is pH and what is acidemia or alkalemia. Then what are the primary disorders? Then we'll calculate their compensation if present. Then if the compensation is present, whether it is acute or chronic, and we'll look at the anion gap. And if there is an anion gap, we'll check the delta gap and we'll see what are different clinical processes. So to start with the normal values, so we have uh, pH, which is uh, in the range of 7.35 to 7.45 and uh, PaCO2, that is partial pressure of carbon dioxide from 35 to 45, bicarbonate from 22 to 26, anion gap from 10 to 14. So normal albumin will take it as four. So any blood gas analysis, you are going to look at the pH first. So any pH less than 7.35 is suggestive of acidemia and a pH of more than 7.45 is suggestive of alkalemia. So you had noted difference here. There's a difference between acidosis and acido acidemia. For an acidemia to be present, the pH has to be less than 7.35 in the calculated uh, value. Whereas you can say an acidosis even if the pH is normal because the other parameters will be depicting an acidosis which is a process which will ultimately lead to acidemia. Similarly, alkalemia means a pH more than 7.45. So if you have an alkalosis with a normal pH, that means the other parameters are pulling towards alkalemia and the pH can land up in alkalosis. So you have to make a difference and remember these two terminologies, acidemia and acidosis, similarly alkalemia and alkalosis. So we'll begin with a, a small example where we are going to discuss all our um, further discussions on based on this example so we have a 64 65 year old male with ckd present with nausea diarrhea and acute respiratory distress he has an abg of ph of 7.23 with a bicarbonate of 17 and a po2 of 235 on 50 percent fio2 so his other parameters are sodium is 123 Chloride 97, bicarbonate is 7, and blood urea nitrogen is 119, creatinine is 5.1. So, what do you find whether he is acidemic or alkalemic? So, as we know, the normal parameters of pH is 7.35 to 7.45. So, we can say it as acidemia because the pH is less than 7.5. 3, 5. Now when we go to the next slide, so in this example we have a pH of 7.23 with the PCO2 of 17 and a bicarbonate of 7. So the answer is acidemia. Now once you have acidemia then you look at the PCO2. So when you see that the pH and the PCO2 both are decreasing and in the same direction so there is a primary metabolic component whereas if you see that pH and PaCO2 are in the opposite direction like for example here the pH is 7.23 and the PaCO2 is more than 45 so you can expect a primary respiratory component so in this example because pH and PaCO2 are in the same direction so possibly it is a primary metabolic acidosis so since the pH is 7.23 there is presence of acidemia so what is a primary disorder as I already told you so whenever the pH is low and the bicarbonate also moves down in the same direction like pH so it is a 
metabolic acidosis if the ph is low and the co2 increases so it is a respiratory acidosis respiratory component so in metabolic components remember the ph and the bicarbonate go in the same direction whereas in the respiratory component the ph and the carbon dioxide go in opposite direction okay so in a metabolic component ph and bicarbonate go in the same direction so we have to remember this table now coming to our example so here the ph is low and partial pressure of carbon dioxide is low so ph and P psu2 are going in the same direction then it is most likely a primary metabolic disorder now we have to see if there is an underlying secondary disorder now what we will do we will do a simple test that is we will calculate the compensation so if there is a respiratory acidosis so you remember for every 10 increase in PSEO2 the bicarbonate increases by 1 in acute case and in a chronic case for every 10 increase in PSEO2 the bicarbonate increases by 4 now in respiratory alkalosis for every 10 decrease in PSEO2 the bicarbonate decreases by 2 and in chronic cases for every 10 decrease in PSEO2 the bicarbonate decreases by 5 so you have to remember this so in case of metabolic acidosis we use a very common formula called as winters formula where the expected PSEO2 is given by this 1.5 into bicarbonate plus 8 plus or minus 2 so you have to remember this formula so in our case since it is a metabolic acidosis we are going to apply this formula so metabolic alkalosis for every 10 increase in bicarbonate there is a increase in PSEO2 by 6 so now in our example we have a pH of 7.23 which is less and 17 of PSEO2 which is also less so because since both are in the same direction so it is a primary metabolic disorder now whether the bicarbonate is appropriately compensated by the kidneys will apply the winters formula to see the expected bicarbonate so the expected bicarbonate is given by the winters formula which is 1.5 into the PaCO2 plus 8 that is equal to 18.5 so here the bicarbonates are 7 so the correct compensation uh, I'm sorry so here uh, winters formula gives the CO2 the expected CO2 is 1.5 times the bicarbonate plus 8 so we have a compensation of almost uh, 17 of PaCO2 so there is correct compensation so we will take it as only a primary metabolic acidosis now once we have calculated uh, that it is a primary metabolic acidosis we will go to calculation of anion gap so how is it calculated anion gap is sodium minus chloride minus bicarbonate there is normal 12 plus or minus 2 so what is corrected anion gap whenever there is a difference decrease in albumin we have to give a albumin correction for the anion gap so if there is an anion gap acidosis then we will calculate the delta gap so in this video we will not be dealing about the calculation of the delta gap so we will be dealing about the calculation of the delta gap in the next video so we will skip delta gap here uh, now whenever there is an increase in anion gap like sodium minus chloride minus bicarbonate so normal is 12 to uh, plus or minus 2 12 to 14 um, so since albumin is 4 there is no need to correct uh, then we have some examples where anion gap is increased like uh, patients with uh, methanol uremia diabetic ketoacidosis paraldehyde INH so it is the mnemonic you can go through it later so we have an explanation for anion gap which is because of the uh, unmeasured uh, anions like lactic acid 
uh, in this case because of uremia so we have something called as uh, normal anion gap uh, that is non gap metabolic acidosis where it is uh, most commonly because of diarrhea ileostomy colostomy so these are the causes which you can go through then uh, you have metabolic alkalosis the reasons causes for metabolic alkalosis and respiratory alkalosis these are the reasons for respiratory alkalosis so respiratory acidosis most commonly an acute exacerbation of copd uh, which you commonly see in the clinical scenario you can go through the causes later on so coming to the steps once again we'll repeat so whenever you see an abg you see whether it is acidemic or alkalemic then you find the primary disorder with a ph and pco2 are going in the same direction it is a primary metabolic disorder when the ph and pco2 are going in the opposite direction it is a primary respiratory disorder so whenever you find a primary disorder you look for the appropriate compensation and whether see whether the compensation is acute or chronic and if you find a metabolic acidosis then calculate the anion gap and see if it is an high anion gap metabolic acidosis or a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis further you will have to calculate the delta gap which you will see in the next video and see what is the uh, differential clinical process present in the patient so thank you so much for watching the video so we'll post another video for the delta gap and the strong end difference thank you